Don't you just love it when you can get the very best of the best information in really quick bite-sized clips? Well, that's what you're getting in today's episode, Podcast Secrets, from some of my very favorite podcasting gurus. So let's get to it. Welcome to the Course Creators HQ Podcast, helping you navigate the latest techniques for creating and marketing online courses. And now, here is your host, Julie Hood. Oh, this is going to be such an incredible episode. And for episode 62, we're doing a very special one to celebrate International Podcast Day on September the 30th. So I've pulled together several of my very favorite podcasting gurus to give you specific advice just for us as course creators. So I do have one big favor to ask you, though. These gurus all took time out of their very busy schedules to record these answers and advice for you. So if you could please follow and subscribe to their podcasts, I would really appreciate the little thank you for them for giving us their time and advice. And don't worry, I've made it super easy for you because I put all of the links to their shows in the show notes at coursecreatorshq.com slash 62, or you can just go to the show notes in your podcast player and you can see all of the experts and their advice and their podcast episodes, plus several of them are giving away freebies for you. So it's all contained right there in one place for you so you can subscribe. Okay, so our first question today is answered by the amazing Melanie Benson of the Amplify Your Success podcast. And her question was, I'm not really sure if I should create a podcast or not. What advice would you give to help me decide if I should? And here's what she had to say. I'm not sure if I should create a podcast or not. Should you? Well, only if you want to boost your authority, attract more great clients and opportunities, and build a powerful collaborative network. Hey, it's Melanie Benson. I'm host of Amplify Your Success podcast, and I help entrepreneurs transform their wisdom into wealth and become a highly paid authority. When I'm helping a client add an extra six figures to their business, whether it's a six month goal or a one year goal or even a monthly goal, the first thing we have to do is look at your brand profile. And if you don't have a podcast, you're missing out on a huge brand influence platform, I like to call them. And it's one of the ways you can stand out in a crowded market and really create the energy of being an authority in your field. Now, let me talk about two reasons to start one. First of all, you're looking for a way to stand out in a crowded market. And one of the best ways to do that is to borrow influence. So if you don't feel like you have influence yet, this is a fast track opportunity to get your name out there creating buzz and momentum. But even better, when you're wanting to build up more, like I like call it collaboration currency, like you really want to create energy with other people. Borrowing influence from other influential experts in your field is very easy to do if you have a podcast. And if you don't, you've got to find another way. You've got to do a JV or you can do a Facebook Live. But podcasts have a really powerful positioning in the market. It is a form of media and it is one of the hottest ways to do that. Now, here's the second reason you want to have a lead source for ideal clients. Now, there's more than one way to do that. We don't have time to get into all of it here, but let's just say that the conversations you have with your guests and the conversations you're sharing with your community become a magnet for great clients. So podcasting, if done well and positioned perfectly in your brand is a great lead source. Now let's talk about conversely, how do you know if it's not time? Here's one of the bottom line. You need money right now and you don't have time to develop the brand, nurture the podcast, get the messaging right and 
podcasting does take some time to get some traction. So if you need an overnight payday, this is not the strategy I would coach you on. This is not where I would have you start. There are a lot of other things that can work. This is not the best path. It's not that it won't work, but it will take some time. And if you're impatient or you need something right now, I would highly recommend not starting a podcast in this moment, but wait till you're in a better place. The second thing is you aren't you aren't willing to treat your podcast as part of your business, like as a marketing component. And you kind of see it like a side hobby to get great results from a podcast. You really have to create a marketing plan for it. You need to have a strategy around it and it has to fit into your overall uh, brand profile. It's not something you just want to throw out there and start over. I have worked with so many clients who had this idea. They just kind of jumped into a podcast and later they had pod fade and they got really frustrated with the lack of great results. And they invest a lot of money working with me in one of my VIP days to basically uh, reposition and repackage their entire podcast. So if you start out in the right way, you won't have to do that later. So look at the podcast as part of your marketing machine and create the strategy from the get go. Now, if you aren't ready to start a podcast and some of my clients aren't, you can still tap into great value by being a guest on other people's podcasts. And it's a great strategy to help build up momentum with yours. So if you can't tell, I am a huge fan of podcasting. I've had my own podcast for nine years. I'm part of an influential podcasting community. I host a weekly clubhouse room called Next Level Influence Through Podcasting. So I'm all in with this. I love being part of the podcasting community and I love what happens through my podcast. And I hope I've inspired you to start one and answer some of the big questions on your list. I'm Melanie Benson, host of Vampire Success Podcast, and let's get you podcasting. I really love how Melanie told us who should and also who should not have a podcast. So I hope you enjoy that as much as I did and be sure to grab her free gift to how to become a highly paid authority at authorityamplifier.com and subscribe to her Amplify Your Success podcast. Our second question is directed to the incredible and highly entertaining Adam Shibley, who actually has two podcasts for podcasters, the Podcasting Business School and Podcast Launch Tips. So here's what Adam had to say about how to get started podcasting. What's up, everybody? It is your buddy Adam from Podcasting Business School. I also have a show called Podcast Launch Tips, and that's what we're going to talk about here today. Julie asked me to talk about how to start a podcast, some initial thoughts and steps to start a show. So my first step when you're thinking about starting a show, I want you to start with the person that you're trying to impact in mind. Don't create the show that you want to listen to, create the show that they want to listen to. So it should be something that you have interest in, maybe some expertise or you have connections in that field, but ultimately it has to serve an audience. To build an audience, you need to serve a specific audience. So that's kind of the first thing. The second thing is all about SEO, search engine optimization. All right. You want to name your show, describe your show and name your podcast episode titles with search engine optimization in mind. What are the key words? Once you discover your audience and your topic that you're going to speak on, what are those key words that the ideal listener will enter into Apple Podcasts or Spotify when they're looking for a show like yours? A huge newbie podcasting mistake that I see happen is people get really, really creative with their show title, where it's like this obscure inside joke and only they get it, where when somebody enters in podcasting tips, I want my show podcasting business school to pop up. They see that name. They know exactly what it's about. When they see my show podcast launch tips, I'll give you one guess as to what the topic is. All right. Leave your title very obvious, kind of bland and boring, but SEO. All right. Search engine optimized. You can get a little bit more creative with your episode titles and things like that. So do that. Uh, use that as a filter. Now, speaking of one other newbie mistake, I see a lot of newer podcasters. They don't number their episodes. So it's just the title and that's it. I want you to make sure that you are numbering every single episode because once you're dozens or hundreds of episodes deep, 
Each one of those is an asset. Each one is a resource. Uh, I just spoke at an online event this past weekend, and in the chat, I am dropping episode links and numbers uh, you know, every five minutes. People are asking me questions about certain things. I go, here's my answer. If you'd like to see me deep dive on this, check out episode 152 on Podcasting Business School. If I just say, check out the episode about social media, they've got to scroll through 200 episodes to find that, and they're probably not going to do it. But if I say it's episode 152, boom, they go right to it. They can find it. They can start consuming content. All right, last thing, last tip. Um, once you've got that in gear and you're ready to start like recording and putting out content, I want you to map out one year's worth of content ahead of time. All right. You don't want to be that podcaster that is scrambling for content at the last moment. I believe that weekly content is very important. Once you get in that person's routine and their earbuds, you want to stay there or they will find someone else to fill that need when they're driving to work, when they're doing their workout. Same day, same time. It's always there. It's always ready and they can consume it. So map out 52 weeks of content. All right. If you're doing solo episodes, that's 52 things on your topic that you could talk about. If you are interviewing people, then 52 people, that's a list of 52 people that you would like to interview. If you do a little bit of both, then it's half and half. If you do coaching style episodes, uh, how many of those are factored in? But 52 weeks of content and then just commit. Pod pals, I need you to commit to one year. There is such a thing as pod fade out there. I don't want that to happen to you. Uh, I believe like 90% of podcasts that ha have at least one episode don't make it past 10. I think that's the the number right now. So there are over 3 million podcasts that have been launched, but only 250,000 something have over 10 episodes and have released content in the last 90 days. All right. That's a huge attrition rate. So don't be one of those people have content mapped out and be ready to go. And just final thought, a podcast launched is better than a podcast never launched. Get your idea out there. You know, it's ready, fire, aim. Not ready, aim, fire. It's ready, fire, aim. The whole first year is firing, fixing, adjusting, and away we go. I hope this is helpful. Uh, you can connect with me anywhere online at Podcasting Business School or the website www.podcastingbusiness.school. I appreciate you. I hope you launch that show, and I wish you health, happiness, and many downloads. Hey there, I hope you like that. Be sure to connect with Adam and become one of his pod pals. He does a special episode with them every couple weeks. So go visit him at podcastingbusiness.school. All right, so question number three is actually directed at my podcast coach, Doug Sandler of the Nice Guys on Business podcast. He's the one who got this podcast launched for me in 2020, and I'm so glad that he joined us so he could give us some additional ideas for monetizing our podcast outside of an online course. He's got some more ideas for you, so here's what he had to say. Hey, it's Doug Sandler from Turnkey Podcast Productions, and along with my partner, Strickland Bonner, we have uh, put together a list of five ways to make money podcasting. One of the biggest challenges that people have when they first start podcasting is they really just don't know how to make money from their podcast. So the first thing that they think that they're going to actually make some money from sponsorship and advertising. And while that could be a long term goal to try to achieve in podcasting, remember your chargeable amount for advertising is directly attributed to the size of your audience oftentimes. And with uh, industry standards being somewhere in the 15 to $25 per thousand listeners it, uh, for each commercial that you do, it may take you a long time before you even have a thousand listeners if you ever get there. The goal is not to have a big audience. The goal is to have an engaged audience. So I'd much rather have an audience of 50 people that are engaged than 500,000 people that do absolutely nothing. Uh, that being said, there are many ways to monetize your podcast outside of advertising and sponsorship, but also in addition to creating courses, which will require people to be engaged in your audience. So in the meantime, I think diversity and diversification of income streams is usually the best way to approach podcasting. So we came up with a list of five ways to make money podcasting, and I'm going to give you a few of those now just so you kind of have an idea of what those things are. So the first way that you can make money podcasting is simply turning your audience into customers. Now, that would re require that you have an audience of any size. 
certainly creating a call to action that's clear, precise, concise, and gives your audience an action item that is very clear uh, would be a way to do that. If you have one listener to your audience and they're engaged in your in your message, then uh, that one ma audience member could become a buyer of your online course. So, of course, that's the most obvious way is to be able to have an item, or a product or service that you can sell to an audience that exists out there in the in podcast land. Um, that being said, I'd rather have the control more in my hand. So we've learned how to actually make money out of that guest seat or off of that guest seat. I'm not talking about charging someone to sit in the guest seat, but I'm thinking about an idea of qualifying somebody to sit in the guest seat that is ideally suited to share their message with your community. Uh, that would be something that would be relevant to a problem that your community might be having. And uh, you are working through a problem with your guest on the show would give a great way for your audience to hear uh, you know how to solve that problem. But from a monetization perspective, it also might be listening to your guest with not only the ear of how can they best serve your community by the message that they're sharing, but are they qualified to buy the products and services that you have? Now, it's not a coincidental thing that they have the product. They have a need for your products and services. If you actually put people in the seat that potentially have or pre-qualified to have a need for your products and services, that gives you a double dip of, of knowledge. It gives you the the understanding of how their message can best serve your audience. But it also tells you how they can best serve your client list as well. So turning your guests into clients would be a good way to, to monetize your podcast. Another way to monetize your podcast is by making those guests joint venture partners. So when I talk about that, I'm thinking about, again, the message that they provide shares a uh, shares valuable lessons to your community. That would be one year that you would be listening through. But the other year that you would be listening through is um, is whether there would be a good opportunity for you to do a joint venture partnership with that person sitting in the guest seat. Do they have a product or service that that complements yours? Would it make sense for you to have a, a follow up conversation with that guest after your podcast recording would be over? The third way to make money podcasting is through turning your guests into affiliate relationships, meaning does the product or service that they offer complement the product or service that you have? And if they have provide a unique link, uh, you can track those people in your audience that are buying the products and services through that link to back to back to your show. Uh, you can earn a commission. The beautiful thing about affiliate relationships is that um, there's no product delivery for you. So I would say those three ways of turning your guest seat into dollars is absolutely a must do, especially early on in the podcast game where you don't have an appreciable audience of any size. So again, joint venture partnerships, uh, affiliate relationships, and turning those guests into clients. Hopefully this gives you a little bit of information. Feel free to get our five ways to make money podcasting directly from the link, which is turnkeypodcast.com forward slash toolkit. Not only will we share some valuable information about how to make money from both sides of the microphone, but we'll sh share the final two ways that you can make money podcasting with the five ways to make money podcasting mini course. Okay, thanks. Good luck. So I hope you were able to grab those really great ideas from Doug, but if not, no worries. Just get his podcast toolkit at coursecreatorshq.com slash 62 or in the show notes. And you can get those three plus the two extra ones that he's giving and the mini course. So jump on that. And then for our fourth question, I'm thrilled to introduce you to Travis Brown of the Podcast Builder Club podcast. He also has this amazing resource to help you ask even better questions during your podcast interviews. If you've ever wondered or struggled with that, be sure to visit him at poddecks.com. Dot com and you can get a free deck of questions at free.poddex.com. So Travis's question is, what advice would you tell someone who is experiencing pod fade? And I know you heard several of the experts mention pod fade. So if you're wondering what happens and what pod fade is, it's when you sort of start a podcast and then you lose interest in doing it because it is a long-term strategy. So you stop, you don't keep posting new episodes. So here's what Travis has to tell us about avoiding pod fade. Hey, Julie, it is Travis from Poddex. So what advice would I give to someone who's experiencing pod fade? Well, pod fade is not necessarily a medical condition, but it is something that's going to block your mindset. 
And I have three ways that you can tear down your mindset around podcasting in order to try to have more fun and to put out great content consistently. Because we all know that consistently releasing keeps your audience, but you also want to be excited when you're doing it. So here's a couple different ways that you can reduce pod fade. If it ever pops its little goblin head up and makes you want to quit, just remember that quitting is the worst possible scenario, and you can use these three tactics in order to keep going. So the first one is to simply reduce, okay? And when I say reduce, I mean you want to reduce the output. So if it takes you two hours to record an episode, then you have to listen to it for two hours to edit it. And you're spending hours and hours and hours creating this piece of work And that may be contributing to you saying, is podcasting worth it for me? It's taking too much time. So in that case, you want to think about how you can reduce a few things. Maybe it's reducing the length of time that you're podcasting. Maybe you contribute some five to 10 minute episodes, some snacks. I love to give people a quick hit of information because you never know what someone's doing when they're listening to a podcast. Not everybody is driving for an hour. Some people are just doing the dishes or walking the dog. So consider reducing the time you're recording, which will inevitably reduce your output of what you have to do to produce the actual episode. Now, you can also reduce other things, like what you're doing to create that episode. Maybe you're making a bunch of marketing materials. Maybe you're putting in a bunch of music and sound effects. Maybe you are just overcomplicating the process of turning on a microphone telling a great story, giving great value, and then putting it on the internet. There's lots of gurus out there that are going to tell you what you need to do, but the truth of the matter is is that a podcast is audio that gets distributed through an RSS feed to your listeners. It doesn't have to be fancy, so think about how you can reduce the fanciness of your podcast. Now, the next way to avoid pod fade is you can either take a break, which is totally okay, And you don't have to apologize to people. You don't have to make a big announcement. You can take a week off. Here's your permission slip. I'm giving it to you right now. Or you can start to reuse content. Now, I want you to remember that just because somebody downloads your episode doesn't mean that they listen to it. And even if they started listening to it, doesn't mean they made it through the entire episode. So we get phone calls. We get distracted. We have fire drills that come up and take us away from podcasts. And sometimes we don't go back. So just because you've published a topic doesn't mean that everybody who listens to your podcast has heard it. And it also doesn't mean that the new people coming into your world have heard your take on that either. So you can either retell a story or a lesson that you've given because there may be new listeners who hadn't gone back through the catalog, or you can create something like a best of episode where you find five or six moments from the episodes that you've created and sort of put them all together in a best of episode so somebody gets like those little highlight reels of your podcast. Or maybe you make it a top 10 list, your top 10 favorite moments on the podcast. But figure out how you can reuse what you've already done instead of having to continually create something new all the time. So reuse what you've made, even if it's an Instagram live or a a live video, or maybe you were a guest on someone else's podcast, ask them if you can replay that episode on your feed. And so you have access to all these things you've done, and that could become future content. Now, last is to reintroduce yourself to your audience. A lot of times we get hung up on having a guest and we focus on the guest or we are giving valuable lessons, but we're not really necessarily sharing anything about ourselves. And you know this, but people come to your podcast for you and you don't always put yourself out there as much as you think you should. So there's a lot of different ways you can reintroduce yourself to your audience. You can simply remind them why you started the podcast and tell them where you're at, what state of mind you're at while you're thinking about pod fading. Be authentic, be transparent, be vulnerable. Now, you can also use my tool. It's called Poddex, and I have an episode deck that gives you 50 unique podcast starting prompts, or you could use like an interview deck and answer questions. And so you're simply going to shuffle up, pull a card, 
and spontaneously create something. And I'm not talking about creating three hours of talking about yourself, but you can go on and, for instance, tell someone your top three books that you've ever read, okay, and why that your audience would enjoy these books. And you can even include a couple affiliate links so when they buy them, you make a little money on the back end. But people are there for you. I know you might not believe that, but people are coming to your show for the host. And the guests are great. And the value is great. But people want to know more about you. So find ways that you can tell stories about what's going on in your life, how you can inspire people to keep going themselves. And if you need a a quick and easy tool, you can go to free.poddex.com and I'll send you this episode deck completely free. All I ask is that you cover shipping and you'll have 50 ideas for podcasts. That's almost a year of podcast. And the reason I created this is because I don't want you to pod fade. I don't want you to go away. Now remember that life is like a roller coaster and you have to experience the lows in order to experience the highs. So anytime you're thinking about pod fading, you're in a low point and you just have to power through and keep your mind right so you can get to those high points and enjoy it because it's never going to end. Podcasting is something we commit to that really doesn't have an end date. So you need to keep your mind fresh and you need to be a happy creator because if you're not, it's going to come through those speakers to your audience. They're going to feel that too. So I hope that helps you remember, reduce your output. That might mean shortening your episodes or just the process of creating them. Reuse some content. You've made a bunch of awesome content and there's a lot of fun ways that you can reuse it. And finally, make sure you're continually reintroducing yourself to your audience. I think one of the coolest things you can do is just be authentic. A lot of people want to look like they're these, you know, six-figure multimillionaire gurus, but we all have problems. And if you can share authentically something you're struggling with, you're going to be a lot more magnetic. You're going to seem more like a person and you're going to be super relatable. Now, you don't always have to just share your problems, but tell people what you're all about. Reintroduce yourself often so people remember why they came to your podcast. And again, this is Travis. You can check me out at Poddex on Instagram where I drop daily tips. I'd love to have you in my community. And Julie, thank you so much for having me be a part of this International Podcast Day podcast. I really love how Travis was telling us to be a little bit more vulnerable and really honest with our audience because I think that builds a whole new level of connection with your listeners. So be sure to grab the free pod decks set of cards that he's offering for you. The links will be in the show notes. And for our final question, It is the one and only Alex Sanfilippo of the Creating a Brand podcast. Be sure to check out his podcast. And if you're looking for guests for your podcast, Alex also has an incredible website at podmatch.com to help you find the perfect guest. Alex's question was, what advice would you give new podcasters? And here's what he had to say. My name is Alex Sanfilippo, and between being a podcast host myself and the founder of two softwares that specifically serve podcast hosts, I am full-time in the podcasting industry. Today, I want to share some advice for new podcasters, and these are things that I wish I would have known when I first got started. I have four points to share with you today, and I trust that if implemented, they will serve you well on your podcasting journey. So let's go ahead and dive into each of these points now. Number one, have a narrow focus for your show. Many of us that start podcasts say that my show is going to be for everybody or for a wide group of people or it covers three or four topics. But here's what I've learned, and it's that if something is for everyone, it's for no one because no one is everyone. We have to get that through our minds. That We have to have a very narrow focus for our show. Now, I know that the examples out there of the, the big podcasting celebrities show that you can be very broad with your reach. But the truth is, if you're starting a podcast today, that is no longer possible. You have to have a very narrow focus and goal for your listeners. There's a quote that I always love to say, and it's unspecific goals lead to unspecific results. You need to make sure that you have a specific result that you want your listeners to be able to learn from. You can only do that by having a very narrow focus for your show. So make sure it's name, description, and all the episodes go in the same general direction. Again, being very narrowly focused because that's going to be what serves the people the best. 
Number two, create and define an avatar for your show. This is your most ideal listener. And this should be a fictitious person, but you want to take the time to really define who this individual is. You want to know where they work. You want to know what they do for fun. You want to know if they have a family, if they're single. You want to learn as much as you can about this person and make a true story for them. Because if you do, it'll help you always remember that that is the person that you're serving. Always think about them when you're thinking about the narrow focus of your show. Would it serve my avatar? I've named my avatar. His name is Adam. I know all about his story. And I always ask myself, does this podcast episode I'm producing actually benefit Adam? And you need to do the same for yourself. So make sure to create and define that avatar for your show. Number three is to build an SOP for episode releases. SOP stands for Standard Operating Procedures. And what this simply means is everything that you do to release a new episode, document it. As a matter of fact, I know this is so important because I actually pulled podcasters and I learned that one of the main reasons they stop podcasting is because of the stress that's involved with producing episodes. And when I really dove into what that meant, it was actually the lack of organization and systems. So creating a standard operating procedure for your episode releases is going to help you stay organized, have less stress and actually get things done much faster. So the way that you do this is simply document everything you're doing. Start off by writing it down on paper and then you're going to want to use a system to actually Keep it more organized and in front of you. But the idea is to know everything from I'm recording the episode, I'm finding the guest, I'm thanking the guest, I'm making social media content, I'm editing it. All those different things need to be part of this SOP that you build. And number four, my final point is to meet your listeners and get feedback from them. If you're like me, you probably struggle with this at the beginning. You like to hide behind the microphone, right? That's why we became podcasters. But the truth is you can't know if you're really being impactful unless you begin talking to your listeners. Now, you might be saying, Alex, how on earth do I talk to my listeners? How do I find them? Anytime you hear feedback about your show, anytime someone says, hey, I love this episode, or they share it, reach out to them if it's on social media directly and ask them for 10 minutes of their time to jump on a phone call or to jump on a video conference call. And what you want to do is ask them four very specific questions. And I found these to be the most powerful questions to help you further develop and build your podcast out. And I'll list those out for you right now. First off, you want to ask them, where do they hear about your show? Where do they hear about your podcast? By doing that, you can figure out where you need to put more marketing efforts. The next thing you can do is find out what they like about your show. Ask them what they like. That way you can continue to improve in that area. In the same vein, you want to ask them what you could do to make the show better. So don't ask them what they don't like. Ask them what would make it better. That way it's easy for them to answer. And when you figure out what people say that you could do to make it a little bit better, start making those improvements. And the last question is to ask, what is your biggest struggle right now? By learning the answer to this question, you're able to actually start providing solutions. Again, you've got a narrow focus. So now you know what these people are interested in and how you can better serve them with your content, products, or services. So these are my four points that I wanted to share with you today. And I believe that if you begin implementing them, you'll not only survive, but also thrive as a podcaster. Again, my name is Alex Sanfilippo, and you can find my show at creatingabrand.com. And also check out my two companies, podmatch.com, where you can find guests for your show or be a guest on other shows. And additionally, if you want help with developing an SOP, we have a great project management software specifically for podcasters called podcastsop.com. Thank you so much for listening. I encourage you to keep on podcasting because what you're doing is serving the world. And thank you, Alex. What a perfect way to end this very special episode because all podcasters and course creators are serving the world. You are changing the world by helping others with what you're teaching and sharing with them. So please consider a podcast to help spread your message even further. I want to send out a huge thank you to Melanie Benson, Adam Shively, Doug Sandler, Alex Sanfilippo, and Travis Brown for joining me for this very special episode to celebrate International Podcast Day. Please be sure to follow their podcasts and check out all their free gifts in the show notes at Course Creators HQ dot com slash 62 and happy international podcast day take care and we'll catch you next week